Hey, this is Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew. Today we're going to talk about something difficult. Picard or Kirk? Nothing? Okay. Picard or Picard or Kirk? Picard or Kirk, which is Picard. your captain. Picard. Picard. One hundred percent. I was thinking about this today, and I think how you answer that question kind of determines a little bit about who you are. Mm. Picard's methodical, mm. right? Picard's like you can practically see the gears working up here. He's kind of always constantly like trying to be on the next step. A good captain. Kirk is like the heart. Kirk's like mm -hmm. brash and like mm -hmm. he just like goes by the instinct. It's like Obi Wan Kenobi versus Han Solo. Mm -hmm. It's like you have your like slow, calm down guy, then you got your other guy. So, um, but you know what? Forgive me. You can't help but feel that Kirk is ruled by his passions. I mean, there's a lot of women who are just wearing blue makeup. Exactly. And he seems to go find them all the time. So he's, he's ruled by his passions. You know, it's like a quarter of the fights he got in, he didn't have to. Oh, I'd say all the fights, one hundred percent. <laughs> yeah yeah and then when you think about picard what is it i might get the number wrong so everyone forgive me but there are four lights yeah yeah exactly yeah. exactly I mean, exactly so that alone i mean on. just like and i know it's stereotypical but the make it so that's yeah. like that's who picard is is yeah. like that is him and then mm -hmm. kirk is like we do whatever the heck we want so anyway um yeah so yeah royal path that stuff um so i thought i would actually start because i actually wrote down some questions that i think i would be remiss if we didn't at least like address there's some probably some like like okay so like first off just simple basic father what is the royal path you talked about it a little bit but where does that come from what particular saint from what particular region, perhaps, you know, somewhere in Russia said that? And what does it mean and kind of why is it important right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, it's spoken of by several fathers, um, but let me digress a little bit and say um, one of the things that I have found that's important to understand about the fathers, quote unquote, when we say the fathers, is that um you know there there's a there's a lineage there there's a line of succession if you will um and a lot of people want to leapfrog and they want to just go to certain saints certain fathers from a certain time period and there's a lot of not that these fathers aren't great because i mean they're they're greats for a reason they're fathers for a reason um but you'll find certain fathers that people will go to and they will leapfrog other fathers to get there. You know, it's like people will talk about St. Maximus the Confessor, who I love, St. John Chrysostom, who I love. You know, um, some people talk about St. John, St. John Damascene. You know, there's these fathers of the patristic age, um, and even a little bit later, but when you talk about this line in the in the, the patristic mindset, from my perspective, for us, we can't overlook modern elders, Elder Cleopa. Um, we can't overlook, you know, Saint Sophronia of Essex. We can't overlook Saint John Maximovich, Saint Theophan the Recluse. Um, but even speaking of Saint John Maximovich, you know, his spiritual son, uh, Saint uh, Blessed Seraphim Rose. And so Blessed Seraphim Rose actually gave a, a he wrote a really interesting treaty on it. And that's kind of Really, the core of it is, is his being torn about some of the theological issues and some of the atmosphere that he found himself in in the church at the time. And there was these extremes. There was these extremes. And Father Seraphim, in this letter, he's speaking about how torn he is because he's questioning, am I in delusion about these things? But there are these issues that need to be, need to be addressed. And so he speaks about the royal path and the need for the royal path and how the fathers had a stick on this royal path. And what it is essentially is, um, you know, as our Lord said, you know, broad is the road to destruction, narrow is the gate, um, and very few find it to life, eternal life. 
And so this, the real path is avoiding the extremes of the right or the left. And this can be understood in a couple of different ways and, and none of them uh, are opposed to each other. It's all complementary. We can understand it obviously politically, left and right, because um, they're both a trap. And I think for us and for our time in the church, especially in, in, in America, um, that's, really partic- that's a really thing that's in particular for us to watch is these extremes, these pulls from the left or the right uh, in regards of politically speaking. But it's also speaking about, you know, left hand and the right hand blow. The left hand um, and the left pat being, you know, um, sins, of, yeah, sins of a more corporal nature, you know, gluttony, lust, these things like that. But the sins of the right, which are more pernicious, um, prelist, spiritual delusion, heresies, um, you know, these, these are the sins, pride, vainglory. These are the ones that come from the right. Um, and so... That temptation from the right uh, on both levels, both in regards of politically, but also in regards of hypercorrectness, which is what um, Father Seraphim was dealing with, you know, hypercorrectness and, and the, the temptation to fall into um, arrogance in these things that would sever us from our brother and from God. Um, so the real path is about finding the way of the fathers, which is, you know, that, that martyr's edge, that tightrope sticking down that that sharp middle um and that's where we find truth so that's where it comes from um yeah that's where that's that's in a, in a, in a real general broad sense that's where sure. yeah so um if they're if you're feeling like falling into if so if so say you're feeling like that pull right mm-hmm. You're being pulled to the right or to the left. So I'm here. I am walking down this road. On the right, you got your. So let's use politics because that's what I'm trying to eventually get. Is politics right now? Is if I'm feeling a right or a left pull, then I guess is that just a temptation to kind of fall into an extreme because it's more comfortable? Is that like maybe some things make sense and you kind of start to make some conclusions that if you were maybe a little bit more over you have i guess i'm trying to get to the root of that temptation of like those extremes yeah i think well i mean the first thing is it's going to be particular to each person but in a, in a general sense i would say that a lot of the temptation to go either to the, the right or left comes from someone's passions and you have to understand what passions are in understanding passions um, in contrast to quote unquote sins, right? So, um, all passions are sins, but not all sins are passions. So for instance, um, you may, let's say you're at work one day and, um, you don't know what kind what came over you and you, you know, stole somebody's, you know, pomegranate juice. You just don't know what came over you. I just couldn't help myself, right? Um, and and stealing, you know, and even, you know, gluttony, let's say, that's not really something that you struggle with, let's say. It's just for whatever reason, right? Full moon, a certain devil was in the neighborhood, thought he'd ring your bell, whatever, right? You fell into a sin, right? You fell into, you fell into a sin. A passion is something that is habitual. A passion is something that is particular. Um, and, and again, it's habitual and it's compromised of, of a multitude of things, just like we are. Um, it, it can involve everything from family history, your environment, you know, um, your response to certain things over time. So for instance, um, addiction, right? addiction will, its root will find itself in all kinds of things. You know, there's definitely family history that's there, but also to the environment in which Jones raised, a particular traumatic incident that we will find ourselves naturally, you know, responding a certain way. And we, when we respond a certain way to cope for a period of time, but the problem is, is that that coping time um, is never really uh, addressed 
there's not a cap on it. And so what, what should have been a moment of time of just trying to get through something, we don't learn to kind of shut that off if we don't have intervention um, and we don't have someone helping us to kind of address it and to put it in its proper place, then that response to whatever experience then becomes habitual. We've been, we begin to find that we, we are blind to it. We think that it's part of our character. We think it's part of just our environment. We think it's part of our family system, whatever it is. And that situation will, will become a passion. It will become something that uh, plagues us. It's, it's habitual. And, you know, it's, um, it's often, another way to understand it too is it's the, it's the way in which we are um, in disorder. It, it's, it's a way in which the harmony between, you know, us and, you know, the cross, God and the world around us is, is, is particularly damaged, right? So um, you have to understand that first, understanding that certain people's passions will affect in many ways their predilection towards things like politics, uh, unawares to them, yeah. Un unawares yeah. to them, right? Um, so there's all kinds of things that, that go in that, and it's not just passions. I'm not saying that everyone's political perspective comes from their passions, but when we find ourselves falling to extremes, um, then the passions are involved. And that's where you can start looking and, and saying, well, okay, if I'm finding myself in this extreme here, where is it that, you know, I'm, I'm being blinded to a, a certain aspect that's causing me to, a certain thing that's causing me to be open to, to going to an extreme. Does that, does that make sense? No, I can relate because I think I've talked with you being probably the most recently woke person on this call. Like I'm probably had the shortest amount of time of repentance of that. Mm -hmm. um, I can say that a lot of it, a lot of my views stem from my dislike of conservatives, Republicans, because those were the folks that I was hanging out with when I was younger and that church broke bad. So there's a lot of hurt wound there. So, mm -hmm. you know, after I had my spiritual awakening, I thought that, um, I wanted to do the exact opposite of that. So mm -hmm. I started exploring the ideas of like forbidden, but this isn't my, thing. let's keep talking about this. Yeah, I mean, I, I, well, but I, yeah, th this, I, this is what I actually wanted to bring up because I think that this is like, this is the big reason that I wanted to, to do this project is because what I see around me and, and every time I see it, it gives me this like sick, feeling in my stomach is either people on the left or the right. So like, let's just say like, just to say it, like, I'm going to say like woke Trump, right. Mm -hmm. With QAnon being the furthest mm -hmm. to the extreme. Right. So like woke Trump. And what I see is, is, and I saw this, I think when it first became apparent to me, it was obviously 2016, but I realized that like this, I had experienced this quite a bit, that it was something like, I don't like what this side is doing over here. And because I don't like what this side is doing over here, how I offset that is I am going to go as far to the other side yeah. as I possibly. So it's almost like they're seeing it as a balance, right? That it's like this side is getting too heavy. So I need to go heavy on this other side that is as far in the extreme. And if we have equal heaviness on both sides, then there will be somehow like a balance in the force. Mm -hmm. But it's like, no, no, no. Then all you have is everything moving from the middle yeah. out to the extremes. And that's where things are terrible. Whereas like the royal path is not a reaction. And this is, I think that this is like the key because what I see, the biggest thing that I see where this all goes wrong, and I'm seeing it start to develop, is, and this is why I wanted to do this project, is the Sons of Peterson, like I've been warning about this, mm -hmm. the Sons of Jordan Peterson, is that as Peterson fell away and decided that he was not going to pick up his cross, that he was not going to acknowledge the, the truth and existence of Christ and God, and as he like actively pushed that away, and as it started to kill him, all of these guys now went 
to this neo reaction. It even calls itself neo reaction, right? So it's like they went to this reactionary movement on the right to try to offset the wokes. But whereas they're missing that the idea of the royal path is like the royal path is and the, the gate is narrow. The gate is there. Mm -hmm. You're heading toward the gate. The gate is independent of what's what's around. Those are the things trying to pull you off the path. Mm -hmm. And and like so. So this is, I think, the this is what Peterson was presenting. Right. But it's what is definitely missing. Like he was presenting, like clean your room. That's independent of everything, mm -hmm. right? But so what's missing is this, and I even see it like in, I even see it among Orthodox that it's like, well, let's go Catholics. I certainly see it, but it's like let's go as hard in this other conservative. Let's let's just like signal as far as we can on the We're right. We're not like those other Christians, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean but i'm just like that's that's what i'm hoping father to like you know we, we we talked last time and it was uh i thought you brought up this beautiful thing and i've been thinking about it all week where where you know we were talking about the most pernicious statement is there is no difference mm -hmm. and i've just been thinking about it so much mm -hmm. and and it's not the difference between left and right that i think is important it's the difference between the royal path and everything outside yeah. of it right yeah Right. That's what that's what I, I don't know. That's that's my thought. No, I mean, but that's what I would like to hear expanded upon. I mean, I, I think the thing is, is, you know, having like a memento moment, like let's go to the end and then kind of work backwards. Right. Like the thing is, it's, it's Christ. And so the royal path and, and that what you just brought up, the fact that it's not contingent upon whatever extremes or whatever the wind, however the wind is blowing you know, build your house on rock and not sand, whatever, however you want to look at it, it, it's Christ. So the problem is all kinds of people say Christ, right? The, um, the transgendered, you know, Episcopalian yes. bishop is for Christ, quote unquote, right? Um, but then, you know, to the other extreme, you know, I don't know. Kenneth Copeland's for Christ. I mean, it's, there is, there is something that is a miss for a lot of people. And I think the thing is, is that and this is, this is orthodoxy, right? Christ is not and cannot be, you know, built upon our, our projections. If it's, if it's Christ, right? We, we do not seek to change the church, the church needs to change us, right? We do not seek to make Christ likable, approachable, watered down, or, or, or built up. That's another thing. You know, people will want to make Christ into this uh, very, I don't know, like Christ into some mega tyrant. And they will oftentimes forget the the mercy of God, uh, the mercy of Christ. And, and so I, I think the thing is, is really being able to submit ourselves in such a way where we're really looking at this and, and looking at all the little breadcrumbs the fathers have given us to really check ourselves and say, okay, well, where am I, right? Am I, because it's, it's all about fear and control, right? It's all about fear and control, the left or the right, there's a fear of the world going in such a way and I'm not a part of it or I'm not in control of it. Therefore, I will construct whatever tower of Babel I, I need, climb that tower and, you know, begin to, to call on the God and, and bring the God down to me. So people do this in the guise of, of Christianity all the time. And, and this is getting into like antichrist, you know, but I think that's I think that's really key that we establish that first because when you begin to, and I think that's what a lot of people who are I think that's when someone is repenting. This is one of the things that they find very early on if you're going to actually in, in, in encounter Christ through repentance is you have to build up a tolerance. You have to build up the ability to say this is painful, but it's necessary. This is painful, 
but I have faith, meaning I have trust in God. He's, he's going to use this pain because I am aware that my perspectives, my opinions, my tendencies, my passions have led me into delusion, have led me to hurt people, have led, oh, whatever, whatever the situation is. So therefore, I will work within the, the constraints of what Christ has ordained so that I would be purified, which is the life of the church. And that's why, that's why, you know, quote unquote liberal tendencies are so dangerous because number one, they often will guise themselves in mercy or trying to be loving all these things. But what happens is the, the undermining of the correction of God is what begins to happen. So, so for instance, um, and this, forgive me again, this is kind of circuitous, but I'm, I'm trying to flesh something out, right? You know, like, I'll give you a great example where the royal path is so needed and has been, not just because of 2020, but it has been for a long time. Um, you know, works of mercy, right? So you have one side, which will say, oh, works of mercy, um, you know, feeding the poor, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we don't really need to do that. You know, that's humanitarianism. That's not really the church's job. Um, and so I, if you're looking at it from across being, hor you know, the vertical and horizontal, the vertical being our relation to God, the horizontal being our relation to our brother and our sister, our fellow man, you know, these people who are so extreme, which tend to be on the right to where they will have almost a disdain for mm -hmm caring for the poor and caring for people who are, you know, marginalized. Like, like that's where we're at right now where you have to be careful because if you start talking about caring for people, then you're like, whoa, 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 hey, hey, hey. If you're on this side now, buddy, don't talk about social justice, right? Because that's a Catholic yeah. thing. That's, that's a kind of like liberal thing. And that's how we got here in the first place. That's not true. We, ha we have to do that. We, we have to be able to see God in our brother and our sister. We have to be able to be freed from avarice, right? We have to be able to really not, not be, you know, uh, sinking in the sands of materialism. Like we have to care for those who are less fortunate. That's a command in the gospel, like period, right? Yeah. But, but the others swing to that, which is what we've all, what many of us are re responding to is, you know, this, the sin of Judas, right? Uh, well, why why are you wasting that valuable money? You know that, that spike nard, that precious ointment that could have been sold to the poor. Ah, you don't really care about the poor, right? Yeah. Judas didn't really care about the poor. You know the gospel tells us he was a thief, but for a lot of people now, they don't really care about the poor either. It's vainglory. They want it's their virtue signaling. They want to like <laughs> their identity is look. This is what I do. I care for people. I do this. I do that. Right. It's, it's the tax the rich dress that uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez was wearing at the Met Gala. Exactly. <laughs> or the exactly. activist TV show, exactly. which is exactly. coming out. Who is the better activist? And that's like, why. And that's why Marxism is so in vogue right now. Yes, Frank. Yes, the kind of you know, the the revolutions that came up through the schools and the Frankfurt School. And all, that's fine, right? But. It's in vogue right now because of these swings, right? And people are like, oh, you know, people, <laughs> a lot of people now seem to forget what it was like being in America in the, in the 80s, in the, in the height of the religious right, in the height of all that kind of crazy evangelical, like it, it was its own type of delusion, right? Yeah. And so this is the thing that people don't understand, I think, where people, I don't say they understand it, but it's a blind spot for them. They miss it, is that things come up as a response to something else that doesn't justify it, right? That doesn't justify it. But again, that's why, it's, that's why I think the world path is, is what it is, because people will end up in one place and like, well, I'm here now because this other side was so wrong and crazy. And it's like, yeah, I agree with you. But the thing is, is, you have to check yourself so that you, because if you're, if, if we're on a road and 
either side, 100, 100 yards to the left or 100 yards to the right is, is a precipice. You're going to fall off, right? What do you, like, are you going to say, well, I'm going to go all the way over here because I don't want to fall off the left side of the road. Like, well, okay, great. But like, you're going to go off the other side of the road. And, and that's the thing that a lot of people are really not aware of because getting back to what I think what, what I was saying earlier, like, like the passions, right? If, if you are un, unable to have a measure of, and I, I'm being very particular when I say this, a measure of Christian compassion, right? If you're, if you're lacking in that, then, and, and how would you know, right? Well, if you know, you'll know because if you're participating in the life of the church, if you're, if you're reading um, the gospels, if you're, if you're going to confession, if you're partaking in the sacrament worthily, you know, if you're giving alms during the fasting periods, like the church calls, you'll see this in you and you'll say like, God have mercy on me. Let me adjust myself. And let me also not imbibe anything that would flirt my passions and get me to go too far to this end, right? And I, I think this is really important because as we accelerate, you know, further and further, quicker and quicker, to this point of complete, you know, disintegration. The world needs to, the world needs us, and forgive me how this sounds, but the world needs Christians, the world needs Orthodox Christians to really do what we're supposed to do. Like, on the one hand, there's plenty of nonprofits and social services, right? The, the church, that's not the church's job in regards of like just doing that. Like, we do that out of the love of Christ. We do that out of the love of Christ that gives us the love for our fellow man. But that's not why the church exists. The church exists so that we would be the people of God. And as we are the people of God, worshiping him in spirit and truth and repenting, we will be drawn to, to give alms and do those works as he leads us, right? And on the, but on the other hand, the world also needs us to bear witness that this kind of materialist construct, this materialist Christianity that most, that many people, seemingly most people have is also wrong as well, right? We, we can't fall into the air of Judas. We have to say that like, no, we, we worship the living God and this, this God is holy and this God who is holy has, does, and will continue to lead his people in such a way that they will, yes, be separate, yes, be, uh, you know, set on a hill, but never in the sense of a detriment to the world. And, and, that, and that's, where, that's, where we, that's where we lose it. Let me kind of wrap it up in this sense. You think that Noah didn't preach repentance before the door was shut? Noah was a preacher of repentance until the door was shut. It wasn't for Noah to know per se who was going to come, who was going to repent or not, but he needed to preach. And so this, this is what I'm trying to say, what we need to do. We need to build our arcs. We need to, we need to be in the ark, right? But we don't do it at, in a disdain for the world. We, we do it because our, our Lord will preserve us. This is how we are preserved. And we also do it in the sense of hope, right? And so the preaching of repentance is hope. And this is another area people go wrong. People want, they get into like, yeah, repentance. And it's, it's almost like. Punishment. People, they, they, yeah, they, they, yeah, they talk it, yeah, about people, it like punishment. Yeah. People want to beat others over the head with repentance. And, and when our Lord and the forerunner said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, that's great news it's the gospel it's it's the good news right the good news is that we can change with the grace of god and that we aren't dead in our sins we aren't dead in our blindness we aren't dead in our disease we aren't dead we have the ability to enter into life that's the good news and i think that's one of the reasons why in particular a lot of people at some point in time have come across this, um, shall we say, 
one aspect of orthodoxy, usually internet orthodoxy, which totally turns them off. Part of it is because they enter into something media res in the, in the middle of it. They enter into something, the context of a conversation, a thread, and, and, and they're, not in the, they're not in the family, so they don't understand all the nuance of what something's being discussed. And so they just see these people being like, well, such and such and such counsel and such and such father and words like heretic. And so on the one hand, that turns people off because it seems like that's not loving. But what it is, is they don't have the context to really understand what's being said there. And that's why the Internet's one of the many reasons why it's dangerous. So that, that's one reason. But the other reason is that for a lot of people and a lot of Orthodox, they maybe have not entered into the church because of repentance but rather entered into the church seeking correctness. They, yeah. got the, they got the elevator pitch, 1054, the West is wrong, all that stuff, which is fine and true, but that's not what keeps you there. That's not what keeps you in the church. What keeps you in the church is you encounter God and he begins to change you. And that change is, is repentance. And it's a joyful, wonderful thing. I didn't say it's painless. <laughs> it's quite painful, actually. But it's the type of pain. It's like the person who likes to work out. I mean, you look at someone who's got a great body, whatever. It's like that person has learned to embrace the pain necessary to get to get those gains. Right. So this is what we need to learn to do spiritually is to embrace these things, which include saying no to our passions, saying no to our, our you know, our kind of dispositions uncritically and, and really saying, hey, I had this perspective, I had this behavior, I had this process. At least let me say, does this line up with the church? Does this line up with what, what the Holy Spirit would, would have in my life? And if it does, great. You know what I mean? Like between you and your spiritual father, great. But, but a lot of people don't even do that. They just assume I, I, I read my way into the church. I figured it out. So therefore, everything I've already thought of I, is correct. And so they never think to submit themselves, submit their thought processes to the light of the church. And I think oh. that's why so many people find themselves to extremes. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about is, so I've heard you say before uh, that antichrist, not mean against, but in place. Mm -hmm. right okay so with that and i and so i had a lot going on so i hope i'm making sense but um so you have this foundation of in place of so it sounded like almost everything you were talking about just there was really essentially people want the means and not the end because you can still feel very good about yourself. Repentance isn't necessary if you go help the homeless. Mm -hmm. Like you, it seems like sometimes it's almost like the hashtag be kind. Mm -hmm. Like just be kind, be mm -hmm. kind. No, love, love is love. Mm -hmm. It seems to me, I've always picked up a little bit on that. Uh, it's like almost saying like, I can do this myself. Like I don't necessarily need your like I'm a spiritual person. I embrace like the universe and I don't need change. I don't want bad feelings in order for the, for me to be able to do that. I don't need to necessarily change who I am. Mm -hmm. In fact, I need to be exactly who I feel I am and not like really worry about the, the work, you know, like not really worry about having to do any heavy lifting. It's almost like a it's like a proclamation like you know, that new creed, the love is love, science is real, you know, Black Lives Matter, you know, like new the, creed? the new creed. Yeah, the new creed. Yeah. Um, it's almost like, I don't know exactly how to say this. And I'm, I'm just, it's like, I don't need God for this. Like, that's I don't exactly need. It. Yeah. That's so exactly. if we're looking at it, yes, that's exact. So in place of, like, that's kind of where I kind of get the feeling, and I'm just speaking as a lay person here. I like, I have no theological training. I've read about half of a bunch of books that Father Turbo has given me. So that's about where I'm coming at with my theology. But like, uh, 
it seems like that that's building this foundation for this greater thing to come along and be like, yeah, you don't need God. To eventually like, yeah, you do. And I'm him. Like, and I've been him this whole time. Like, you know, like generations from now or five years from now or 10 years from now, somebody could come along and be like, hey, all this stuff. Yeah, it turns out you don't really need repentance and stuff like that. Like, that's not what's really what's important. What's important is that we find that's just like, it seems to me like a couple steps forward. Like, well, yeah. the way. Well, well, did you gentlemen see the new I'm governor the of New York, the new governor of New York, uh, this little speech as we're recording this? It was yesterday, I believe, or it may have been earlier today. Um, there's some video of it. She gave a speech at a church, I believe, a Protestant church, if I'm not mistaken. And she said, basically, I, I'm paraphrasing, but this is pretty close. She said, this vaccine is from God. I need you to be my apostles. She said, I need you to be my apostles. God has given us this vaccine. He's made the smartest people, the scientists, the doctors and all of them to figure out how to give us this vaccine. And I need you to be my apostles and go out and spread this vaccine. We're there, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's the governor of New York state. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like that's she's really getting up there and and yeah. she, that those are the actual words she said. Yeah, well, we I mean we've talked about this before in the past, right? The the Christ of De Janeiro, right? And then the vaccine vaccine saves across that. Yeah, um, you know certain hierarchs, God help us, saying you know our only hope, the only light at the end of the tunnel is the vaccine. No mention of Christ. Um, yeah, and then, and then even furthermore, um, all well-intended, right? All well-intended, but we know what the Rodell's paved. Is it though? Is it though? Uh, well, let, let, like, let's just say for the sake of us trying to stay on the path. Okay. All right. Let's just, let's just give the benefit of the doubt and say like, all we're hanging out in Oceana. Like you can't blame the citizens of Oceana. Like they can't do anything about it. So right, like, right, yeah, right. So all well intended, um, but you know the fact of the matter is, is you know people, um, clergy and and such, making honest, simple in the right way, um, lady. Uh, and honest and simple clergy who are really genuinely concerned, genuinely not not sure about si certain situations, demonizing them, making them making them out and, and building into this narrative which is of the world. It's not of God, right? This narrative that's happening is is there's nothing Christian about it. Any there's anything that would mandate you, anything that would force you in uh, beyond your conscience in this light. That's not of God, right? And so th these are the signs that something is, is afoot from my perspective, just one of the many signs. Okay. And, and I think getting into this, this portion of Antichrist, um, you know, one of, the, one of the problems too is getting back into passions and, and the, the kind of swinging to left or right, whatever your disposition is. I mean, you had people now who okay, the vaccines, whoa, like full stop, right? And, and I'm, I'm definitely full stop anti the vaccine, right? Yeah. Um, but I was anti the vaccine when Trump was pushing it too, <laughs> right? And so that's the whole Same. thing, yeah. That's Same. the whole thing. So you got people who are like, well, the vaccine's good when Trump's doing it because I trust Trump's FDA and I trust Trump and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, and... and and it flips, right? It flips for people who are like, you know, I hated Trump, blah, blah, blah. But now, you know, goodness is prevailing, all this stuff. So, so this is this is the thing, right? Um, and, and this is where I think so a lot of Orthodox right now, um, where we are all, you know, seeing certain things in common, right? The wokeness is crazy. The divisions are crazy that it's brought about. Um, you know, definitely, definitely all the crazy liturgical reforms people 
brought in in the name of, you know, COVIDism, all that stuff, right? That's all sure. But the problem is, is even though we may find ourselves here, that doesn't mean I'm gonna drink the Kool-Aid on this side either, right? Because there's a thing called a Judas goat, which a lot of people maybe aren't aware of, but a Judas goat is a goat that's trained to lead the other goats to a place of slaughter. And, you know, this goat gets out, you know, basically. And, and I think this is the thing that a lot of people just aren't aware of. They aren't aware of this, this tendency. I mean, I don't know, I guess people don't watch enough pro wrestling, but this, this reality that you got to have this heel that's going to, you know, kind of like trump it up, no pun intended, on this one side. And I think all this boils down to a very, um, I mean, you've talked at length about this, uh, Cyprian, you know, and in, in, in your work outlining the, the dim age, but, you know, NPCs and all this stuff, it's like people think it's at the layer of politics. And, and, and the thing is, I'm okay with that. I don't expect anything else from people who are not in Christ. I, that, I know that sounds yeah. terrible, that, but that's just how I see it, right? The thing that kills me is people in Christ who, who are still, who are on that level. They're seeing everything from a materialist lens, psych, on the psychological level. It's just the politics. It's just this person views this and that. And they're not seeing like, no, no. It, it goes a lot higher than that. The whole thing is broken. The whole thing is fallen. Use your news, like, because then you can feel it. Yeah, and 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 people people are are completely unaware of it, and that's why, from my perspective, especially looking at how you know the, that's one of the problems with with a very academic, like an exclusively academic approach to the faith, is that you know you end up like we like we've talked about before. You end up, you know, you end up in the camp of Tony Stark. And, and it's it's tough because you can look at certain things and go like, well, look, this all matches up, this makes sense, blah, blah, blah. Right. Are we talking about the civil war thing again? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. I'm on yeah. board. <laughs> you know, I mean, but if you disregard your heart in that sense, like cap, right? If you, if you, if you don't go with where your heart's leading then it becomes very difficult to navigate these things. And, you know, for a lot of our friends, you know, I, I just have to tell them like, and this is, you know, you know, my famous line, but the people, a lot of people think the antichrist is going to be, you know, an 800 pound crack smoking black lesbian, right? It's going to be, it's going to be like, I'll see it. I'll, I'll know the antichrist. And sure. it's going to be everything that I find repugnant. And it's just like, no, actually. Um, and, It'll be and Matthew McConaughey. The, It'll be right, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, <laughs> the, right. least, the least yeah. offensive person you could possibly imagine. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? And that, and that's, that, that's what it's, that's what it's going to, that's what we're looking at, you know? And, and I, 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 I hate to do this, but for me, there's certain things that have been, there's certain characters, there's certain players on the scene that, and I, I just, people don't like it. It's not the best. I can't give a good reason except for just my spidey sense is tingling. Something's mm -hmm. not right, you know? Mm -hmm. um, there's, certain, there's certain players, high level players, um, hierarchs, heads of universal churches, right? Where, that salt, that savor of Christ, it isn't there. Yeah. It isn't there. And you're like, no, something's that's wrong. That's confusing. Yeah. That's hard. Speaking as a lay person, that's really confusing. Like 2020, like happened. And suddenly I started to like really having to question like who is actually like my leaders here. Because like I was kicking back on my laurels for, for six years of my work. I assume that like, patriarchs that i don't know if you really want to name them or not had my back like i assumed that they were good holy people sure fallen some of them but generally I trusted them you know and as a layperson, like i don't know if you have if nobody has and i would really really recommend 
Beast Mountain Cosmos on his page has a toll of uh, a section all the way over and it says talk 82 notes and they're fantastic. He debunks like a bunch of the reasons why, and I won't get into it, but he debunks a bunch of like the reasons why like people have quoted saints. Like I think, I don't remember who the saint was and he's a fairly big one. So I feel bad for not, but he talked about this thing about if you in a time of plague, if you spread the plague knowingly, you know, if you're not taking the proper precautions then like your sin and you should be like the penance of a murder mm-hmm. or something like that. And Priest Mount Cosmos like breaks that down. To, that's t- taken completely out of context. It's a canon. It's a canon that people have been throwing around. Oh, really? It's a canon? Yeah. Well, it's the interpretation of a canon, actually, that people have been throwing around. And um, yeah, I would, I would advise everyone to go and look at what Priest Mount Cosmos says, because um, I mean, these... These are the times that we're, we're dealing with because, uh, again, um, on the surface, it feels right. It's like, well, why wouldn't we want to be loving? That's what we all heard last year or whatever. Well, why wouldn't you want to be loving? Like, don't you love your neighbor? You know, all these things, you know, like you don't want to kill your grandma, all this stuff, you know. And I'm like, well, like, where was that in 2018? <laughs> where was that? T- I mean. The, the fundamental nature of reality changed, but not in the way that they think, right? The, the, the fundamentals of, of biology, you know, none of that changed. It, it was nothing crazier happened. And they, well, of course it is a pandemic, blah, blah, blah. But I would submit to people, the reality of it is, is they're parroting, they're echoing something that they've been conditioned with. Yes. It's not... There was they're a, not. Ex- they're not experiencing it. They're it's not, not in their every day. They, they they can't be like, oh, my neighbor, like my neighbor on this side, uh, they they died, and my neighbor over here, they died, and my aunt, she died, and and the guy I work with died. It's like, how many people at your work died? Okay, like if this was a real plague, somebody at your work is dead. Okay, in a real plague, like your neighbors are or dead. Just someone you know, because exactly. like, it's like no one I know. <laughs> So, and it's it's and it's always like, well, no, my friends, brothers, cousins, coworker, and it's like, bro, no, right. no. Well, At I that mean, point, <laughs> yeah, I mean, e- even like even even again, let's let's step it back and be like, okay, a virus. Okay, great. Um, they've happened before, right? There's been times of plague before. I guess the big question for a lot of us is. Why is the response so different now than in times past? Moreover, what a happy coincidence that all these other things on the geopolitical level are lining up with these anomalous responses to a novel virus, right? It, it's not one thing, right? And I think for me, that's one of the things that's a good way to stay on the path is don't find the one issue because that's that's the extremes i got this one issue and it's it's and i'm this is my hill and there's hello a, catholics hello catholics yeah the I one was, issue. I say <laughs> there's 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 a place for that okay blah blah but it's like it's the whole thing right it, it's it's the whole picture and so it isn't just like the one thing it isn't the fact that obviously the narrative the num- the statistics i mean all the stuff that's that was thrown out is cooked to say the least right yeah. that, that's obvious and even then the numbers aren't that impressive when you actually break even then down. the numbers are that impressive but but let's just give someone let, let's just for me right let's just give someone the benefit of the doubt and let's say it is what it is and let's say that the three of us and the people that we know and the people that they know just happen to be in a really weird anomalous place where we have been surprisingly, by God's blessing, uh, protected from the ravages of, of what's happened, right? For whatever reason, God loves us and has shielded us and we don't see it. We haven't experienced what the world has experienced. So we're, we're ignorant, okay? But let's, let's, just, let's just give that, okay? 
that being said, how do then you now begin to account for all of the, uh, you know, <laughs> just for the sake of entertainment, all the spooky stuff that's happened, right? The complete body snatcher experience of people that have been going through where it's just like, we literally woke up one night and it's people you've known and loved, you're like at odds. Where, where yeah. did that come from? It's not just the response to the quote unquote virus, right? It's, it's, on, it's, it's permeated all of these levels of our existence, right? It's, and most importantly for us as Orthodox, it's gotten to the heart of our, of our life in Christ. It's gotten to the heart where people are having different perspectives on the Eucharist and different perspectives on, you know, the, the grace of God, the energies of God, the experience of God. It, it's, it's gotten to some really core fundamental things, right? And it's, it's an opulous. Well, fa Father, there's this, so this, this, as you've been talking, what, what has struck me, like you said something, and, and I think that this is one of the things, I've, it's like it's been going in my mind here and it's really starting to, to, to take shape that like one of the things that I see from so many people who I think are, they're good people, they want to be on the path. I genuinely believe that they don't want to be in either extreme, but they're not sure what to do. I would, I would put myself in this in this category to a great degree, because I was someone who was really following the, the spirit that was in me, but it was a bad spirit. Mm -hmm. And so when I gave that spirit up, what I was left with was the intellectual sphere. And it was, you know, when, when father, when you came into my life, I was, Christ was coming into my life, right? That it was like, oh, here's this other spirit because I, I'm inadequate intellectually like i've never i have no ex experience of how do I, like even starting to think about well what am i supposed to do i've always re always relied on inspiration right and it's like i've always been actively pursuing to be drawn by spirits and that was the thing that you said like christ is drawing us mm -hmm. and i think that one of the things is like where i'm seeing people's blind spot on this good otherwise good people mm -hmm and even people in the church is, and, and I talk to them and I see their head, their eyes go like blank mm -hmm. when I say this, is that they're like, well, what am I supposed to do? And I'm like, no, he's going to draw you to the door. Mm -hmm. Like he's going to draw you to the gate. Mm -hmm. It's not, you don't, don't worry. He knows the path. Mm -hmm. He's pulling you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to look and oh, this is coming here. This is coming here. All you have to do is surrender. Mm -hmm. Like he's got the, he's got the lanyard around you he's he's trying hard to pull you and you're like stopping yourself you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it's like if you will just surrender and be pulled you don't even have to think about it. Mm -hmm. surrender and be pulled like and so it's this interesting notion and this is where i think people's blind spot is their blind spot is i want to stay on the path i want to go through the narrow gate and therefore, I've got to be watching my footing and I've got to be resisting mm -hmm. the temptation to go to either side mm -hmm. rather than, no, let him pull you mm -hmm. like he's the resistance. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> you know what I mean? If right. you surrender to him, these things don't have the strength to pull you off. And well, I think that that's like I for, for me, that's this that's this place that like it's there. I don't know how to explain it to people, but I feel like if people could understand that, it would make this whole process so much easier. Well, let me just say this. And I know, <laughs> forgive me how this sounds, but um, I think there's a couple things there. There's some presuppositions that are problematic, which are people aren't even aware of this whole royal path, left hand, right hand thing. Like Orthodox Christians, like, Average Orthodox Christian guy, I, I feel safe saying is not really aware of this, which is why I wanted to do this project because I believe it's the, I believe, you know, Christ is the panacea for everything, but, but in order to really apprehend Christ, it's, it's this path, right? It's this, this is, this has been 
the key, this is the key of the secret that I find everywhere, every father, every saint. And when I'm, when I find myself in the, in the, in a good space is when I'm feeling the pain, the tension of being on the royal path. Right. But people don't even, they're not even aware of that. And if they do become aware of it, then there is also the kind of what you're saying, but there's, there's a, um, it's almost like an autonomy that we all kind of struggle with. And so much of what the Holy Spirit does with us in the church is gently breaking that down for us and not breaking it down, like explaining it, breaking it down, like dissolving it, getting it to where it isn't a, a, a membrane or a barrier, right? If you look at it in, in that way of using the word breaking it down, because what I find the bulk of my priesthood, my ministry, my pastoral work is getting whoever I'm in contact with, whether they're my spiritual children, whether it's someone I'm having a conversation with while I'm waiting, you know, at the courthouse, whatever it is, trying to get them to see that the Trinity, that God is living, not the force not a um, not a kind of anthropomorphic projection for higher ideals, right? Exclusively that, but like God is is living in person. And that like in, in the church, for instance, getting people to understand, no, 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 like Christ is the head of the church and Christ is leading his church and Christ is leading you. You may not like where you're at right now in particular, Right. But part of what you need to learn to do as a disciple, as a sheep, um, part of what you need to learn to do as an Orthodox Christian is understand, you know, Romans 8, 28, all things work for good for those who love God and call those purposes that it's especially in the difficulty that Christ is revealed to us. And when you begin to understand that, then you're like, oh, there he is. Oh, right. I've had some people comment to me in the past, like, you know, they think I'm too bold or whatever. I am. God forgive me. But you know, it's like, man, you talk about God like you know him. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, because that's the point. Yeah, that's kind of the point. You know, it, it's, you know, I try to explain to people, I have so many crosses in my life that I would have never chosen, never chosen them, right? The only way I would embrace those things is, is it, it, to me, that's the evidence of Christ in my life. Not just putting up with them, but embracing them and finding life in them. Finding life in these things that when I was a, you know, 18 year old, 16 year old, 21 year old, it was like repugnant to me, right? Moreover, it's still happening, right? And, and this is this is the big thing for me where, you know, 2020 was a big wake up call. And 2020 was, in, from my perspective, however you want to cut it, either way, it's 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 a call of repentance and judgment. It's a it's a crisis. Right. Yeah. And God has called this crisis upon the world and, and you know judgment comes to the house of god first god is calling all of us to really wake up and start really taking an account who are you what are you doing you know where are where where is your relation to me where is your relation to the eternal things where is your relation to what matters most because i think that that's you know this is this is an apocalypse right this uncovering, and that's what's happening is there's been an uncovering and it's and and it's never as people think it is. Because yeah, the when people in like the totalitarian movie or whatever, like they never like the like the dystopian like t like totalitarian movie, they never think they're in like a dystopian totalitarian I, like well no movie. no author no author would have like they would have started to write this story. And then they would have given it to somebody to read and somebody would have said, not believable. 
Mm-hmm. That, would, yeah, that, would, and- that would never happen. That's mm-hmm. it's it's just it's it's unbelievable. It's the, what what you're writing would never happen. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of that whole thing I wanted to say earlier, which leads into something I want to ask actually Cyprian about this em, em, immersion, this whole idea of like no to tip. You just gotta you just gotta you just gotta believe in like not even science because like I'm not like a huge proponent of science. I like science. You know, it's a useful tool, but it's not. And I know that this is not necessarily what this conversation needs to be, but it's no longer science. It's what Fauci said. And that's pretty much, that is, you know, what science is. Like, he's the mouthpiece for science. But um, I've noticed that, like, this enmeshment, like, like, the eyes glazed over, right? And then I can actually kind of start to tell a little bit about, I can feel what's going on when people start using other people's words. Mm-hmm. When they say things Ideological like, possession. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. it's, they're possessed. Oh, so that's an actual, okay. I, so, I, that is ideological possession. Jordan Peterson was the first person to introduce me to this. And what he said was exactly what you said. He said, you can always tell somebody who's ideologically possessed because you always know what they're going to say next. Yeah. And that's what you just described. Yeah. Because that and that that being estranged or at odds with your family members, that's that's my experience right now. And you know, um, we were kind of talking about it one time, and it's not this way with hardly anybody I know in my family. But my aunt, who is I'm very close to, like maybe we should just we should just, like not talk because she knows how I feel, and that's not common. There's not many subjects we can talk about. And the fact that like, whatever, beside the point, let's all put that away because there has actually, I don't, I don't, I don't know that it's beside the point, man, because you know, it also brings up this other idea that, and, and father, I wanted your thoughts on this as well as it's like, we are talking about a Royal path, but like, is there only one path? Because in the same way that I, that I feel myself drawn by Christ, I look at these people and i see them being drawn by something Mm -hmm. it's not just there because like you say it's it wasn't them so i know these people and i know what their passions are and i know who they've been and it's like something got introduced at a spiritual level that is that is draw it's pulling them Mm -hmm. and they've surrendered to it that's the other thing is they've surrendered to the pull of whatever this thing is and it's pulling them towards a gate as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, sorry, it, Father. I, so one of the big things that I think we need to always work to do is to remove the dichotomies. Because what happens is, is we think, again, like I said earlier, it's on this level, psychology, politics, you know what I mean, whatever it is. And it's like, no, it, it's all working together, right? It, it's all working together. I have, I find some pretty common threads that like uh, I find a lot more common threads for people who have been the spell has they they've been beguiled by the spell. What's not so common, and this is tough, is why some people escaped the the spell, right? Or or why or what allowed some yeah. people to wake up, right? But but the but the common thing about the spell and. People are gonna roll their eyes. I don't really care, to be honest with you. It, it's it's just it is what it is, right? Um, but there's like a common thread of, you know, heavy, um, particularly like Facebook users, heavy watchers of um, the new like certain news outlets, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it's all the same thing for the most part. But like, you know, certain news outlets, people like heavy watchers of of, of these things. Um, a lack of real critical, uh, a, 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 a real critical eye for those outlets. Um, you know, one of the things that, that we've talked about at times is another common thread is, you know, and it's, again, there's always exceptions, but like for a lot of boomers, like they were raised to have just, well, the news is the news, yeah. you know, Walter Cronkite. Trust. Is just, they have is trust just, for it. They have trust yeah. Walter Cronkite is just giving me the facts. And it's like, like the third reference to 1984 I'm going to make tonight, but the part at the end where he like holds up the whiskey or the victory gin 
when like at the last minute the troops get saved like it's just like they're gonna head for destruction at the last minute we just got news in that this whole other militia came in behind and everyone's like yes like that is exactly like that's the truth that's what happened and that's why it's so good like that's i can trust this this is my thing right and so and so the thing is is there's this common thread in which the medium the medium in which the the spell was casted is is fairly obvious and and then again i mean we can get into all kinds of fun you know rabbit holes you know in regards of intelligence agencies and psyops and all that but the thing with that is is well what do you like people think that people first of all man let me even step back a little bit even say something else that i find really common and especially for our brothers and sisters who tend to be more you know on, on the left side of things um and depending on who you are and how you look at me you might consider me there too i, I don't know but one thing that I found under their common thread, besides the Facebook usage, besides the trust of establishment and the news, it's a absolute ignorance of, of demonic forces. Absolute mm. ignorance. 100%, and, or, man. No, not more than ignorance, denial. Denial. A no. lot of it, and this is, where, this is where that academic orthodoxy comes into play. They'll be like, well... The devils are really just a kind of anthropomorphized projection of man's lower base tendencies. And the fathers use that language of devils really just because blah, 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 right? These are the people who have bought hook, line, and sinker into this, right? They're the ones who think like, oh, um, they don't like the elders. Remember I was talking about the patristic mindset? Yeah. They're the ones who are like, oh, I love Maximus. Oh, Elder Cleopa. These, these, you know, Elder Joseph, Elder from these people are just like hokey shepherds who didn't know anything, right? These are the people who they look at, oh, I can't wait till orthodoxy gets rid of all this backwoods country superstition, sure. right? That's, that's a real common thread. And you even see that in the life of St. Nectarios when he's at that school. Like mm -hmm. he's just trying to teach orthodoxy. You know, like it's backwards. We need to embrace mathematics and science. And I just got to say really quick, I just got to, is you were talking about like devils or anthropomorphized like, you know, aspects of like man's base nature or whatever. Mm -hmm. But do you remember from season one of Daredevil, like the show, right? When he's talking to that priest and he's like, does the devil exist? And the priest is like, well, seminary we learn it's the adversary or something like that he's kind of talking a little bit you know kind of i don't know exactly what he says and this is more how it made me feel so i don't think this is actually like how it went down but then matt is like uh so he doesn't and the priest's like hold on you let me finish and then he starts talking about this time he was in this village these warlords came and like tore down the village and like killed everyone and he was there and he's like saw like a person walking out of the burning building or like a burning hut i i think and then he's like i saw the devil mm -hmm. like that was real like i mm -hmm. that's not no imagery that's nothing poetic right there like i saw the devil this I, tell, like, I try to tell people i have like i have seen people turn into things in front of me i have seen their faces change baggins into something else Exactly. I've seen that happen in real life mm -hmm. when I was completely sober. And it, it, when you see it happen, it's ugly. You can't, but you can, it's undeniable. Yeah. Then there, there will be no question in your life ever after that, because what are you going to deny your own eyes? It's like, no, I literally saw this person change from something that is human into inhuman. But I see saw the, it happen. The other thing with that though, too, is, and this is another thing that I found is, um, and again, there's always exceptions, right? But when you experience that, there's a um, there's a fear that comes in that there's a fear that you encounter that is unlike anything else. Like I have had, listen, you know, I'm just 
dogs bark and cats meow, right? I've had knives pulled on me. I've had guns put to my head. Um, I've, I've seen people commit suicide. I've, I've seen people murdered, like I, all this stuff, right? All this stuff, right? Um, the fear when you encounter a manifestation of a certain level of a demonic entity, it's something else. And, and that's the thing is, I, that's why I'm like, I don't really care. I don't, I don't really care who's gonna say to me, and so say, well, you're in delusion, that's fine. But I'm just telling you, once you've experienced this, it, it, it changes your, and, and those who have experienced it, they know what I mean. It changes your whole experience yeah. of reality. Because then you start because to see it more. You start to see it more. And, and to be honest with you, things that people who have never experienced that fear, it's not like I don't have fear anymore, but I don't fear those things in the same kind of categorical level. Because once you've experienced that kind of fear, it's very, very different. It's very different, right? Because and it's something you have no, you know, inst instinctually, you have absolutely no defense against. Yeah, like you, en no you encounter this and you're like, there's nothing I can do right. against this. Right. Like there's nothing I can do right. as a human being because I'm experiencing something right. that is at a level right. above right. my human ability, uh, my greatest of human abilities. Right. And, I and I would say, the other side of that is this too, which is even more unfortunate. There is a holy terror that happens when you encounter the presence of God to a certain level. And that's another thing I, I just find a lot of people maybe haven't encountered because the, I, there are certain things I don't even think about. I would shudder thinking about in regards of being a priest and the way I approach the altar and the sacraments and the things of God, because I have like the fear of God that I've experienced far outweighs the fear that I've experienced from encountering demonic entities, but it's different. It, 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 it's different. Yeah. One's it, like bone chilling. Like it's like, yeah, one, it's yeah. Frantic it, and weird. There's a lot of frenetic energy to it. And it, and it doesn't one one causes you the fear when you counter that fear of God, which puts you on your face. Your only response is, you know, forgive me. Your only response is, you know, how dark you are, how dark, how dark you are, how, how, how impure you are, right? When you encounter demonic darkness, it's, it's a terror, but, but it's a terror of this darkness that is beyond the, it, it's, it's evil. <laughs> I'm not thinking about myself. Yeah, it's, I'm like it's, concentrating yeah. on this thing. I'm like, what is up with that? Yeah, that's, that's a great, that's a great way to, to, to understand it too. It's like when you encounter that yeah, evil, it, it's evil. And it's just like, what is that? Like, what is that? When you encounter the fear of God, it's just like, you're exposed, right? And you're exposed on such a painfully beautiful, blissful, terrifying, it's, it's all of these things at, at once. And so there's a big, there's a big difference there. And I, and I find that, and this is why experience is so important because for many people, their information hasn't become knowledge because they're lacking experience, right? What most people are taking in as theology and doctrine, this and that, it's information. It's not knowledge because they haven't been through the process of, of experience to allow that information to become knowledge, right? And that isn't like, oh, you know, only the, the, the initiated, blah, 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 which is true. But what I'm getting at with this is, this is why we're in such a dire state because Repentance is not preached. Repentance is not really talked about and, 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 and unfortunately in a lot of places. And repentance is the means by which you begin to have the experience to turn quote unquote theological information into knowledge. But the problem is, is that people view repentance out on this very kind of like moral level of stopping a bad behavior. And that's not, that's not repentance. Go dry. 
What's that? You, you go dry. Like you stop the, you take away the thing, but you don't tip, put anything to right. fill it in. Unless right. it's like another passion or something. Right, but. right, right. It's like you stopping that behavior, that's not repentance. Right, that, that's, that's not it. You have to now stop, turn around and begin to pursue virtue in order for, for repentance to become the thing, right? Well, it's like the holy inversion, right? So it's like, we, we, there's a lot of talk, like Pajot's very good about talking about the, the wicked inversion. So it's like the adversary is going to invert those things of God, but it's like, at, at, least, at least this is how it feels to me, and, and that you very much helped me to understand, like to, to and, and of course, this is going to be, I'm going to fail at explaining this, but like the, never stop the, me. Yeah. The invert, the inversion of that thing that was sin to invert it and was wicked, but yet, Hey, but you're good at that. It, in a way, and it's like, how do you, how do you invert that? How do you still give it attention, but invert it for like the righteous, you know what I mean? To the right, to the righteous end. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is also why for a lot of people, they come to this place where they're like, I have to become Orthodox because that very question of <laughs> yeah, how do I right. do this? Right. <laughs> like, I understand that this needs to happen, but I have no idea how to do it. Right. And that's like, okay, well, that's the life of the church, right? That's why the life of the church the, through the wisdom of the Holy Spirit is set up the way it is, right? Um, a liturgical life, the, the, the connection, the sacramental reality of, of the priesthood and how the priesthood functions in the life of, of the believer, right? This is how that happens because here's the other thing. We talked about this at one point was like, the, the thing about the spiritual father is that he is aware that God is working profoundly, intimately with that individual. And so I may have a general kind of like understanding of like how, let's say, gluttony works, but I can't apply that to Andrew the same way I would apply it to Matthew, right? I can't, that, it, that's not going to work, right? The priest needs the Holy Spirit to guide him, to guide the sheep, the, 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 the faithful person, in the way that is going to help them trod that path of repentance, to take that thing and transform it, right? Because this is one of the things, like, you, you can't destroy energy, Right? So if you begin to see the passions as an energy, and, and then you have, to, you have to begin to understand, I'm not necessarily going to go in there and destroy it. I have to, I have to divert it. I have to, I have to arrange or I have to help a person take that energy and put it in a way now that's going to you know, propel them, motivate them, lead them to, to virtue. Like letting an air out of a balloon. What's that? The Star Trek joke, like letting the air out of a balloon. But yeah, the pressure's got to go somewhere. Right, right, right. I want to go back really, really quick. So um, we talked about, uh, I think a little bit ago, like five minutes ago, we talked about entering the church. Or maybe we didn't. But that's what I want to talk about. So entering the church. Um, so like, I'm a tool, right? Like, I'm just like kind of the worst about a lot of stuff. So my motivation for getting into the church was pretty, like, I knew from a spiritual level, the minute I walked into my first Orthodox church, I was like, this, this is exactly, you know, the smell, the incense. I just happened to walk in at a really good time of like a Greek woman chanting. And like, I walked down, I was like, this is old. This is something I have not experienced. Before. Like, I, I was Protestant, you know, and all that stuff and i've never been to a catholic church so the idea of holy was not like a concept to me. like christian was acoustic guitars and like animal crackers and like you know worship songs and stuff like that um so but my motivations then changed because i saw the light right so then i had my first like profoundly spiritual experience it like you know that's what changed me that's like that was that moment of like, okay, this is it. 
So then I have to ask, and I assume that this is an this is a common experience with people who are in the church is that at some point, like not just true glory, but there's a revelation, right? So there's like a light that's given, or there's a revelation in some way that suddenly knowledge is given to you, like a, a, a restoration has taken place. I guess I had to wonder, I guess I assumed that I thought that that was a pretty common experience, but I wonder intellectual when you end up in a place of intellectualism within orthodoxy is that maybe do you think that maybe that stems from a lack of that experience and coming in based just off of intellect and you're like this is really neat i love hearing about the fourth ecumenical council you know or is that an experience that then grows cold over time because i could see it going that way for me if i'm not nurturing it if i'm not working it if i'm not praying and trying to stay humble and participate in the life of the church and the sacraments and i could see that growing cold i guess my roundabout way of asking this question is how do you think an orthodox person falls into intellectualism to that degree was there an experience and it grows cold or was there no experience and they kind of just, well, rationality is rationality, even rational this whole time, you're going to end up in a rational place. So, yeah, I think that is like my question is like, how does an orthodox person end up in that cold, sterile field of like intellectualism and rationality, but like an actual like her bearing icon would trip them out? Where they would be like, what, 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 what is this? Like, how is this happening? So forgive me. Uh, I guess I'm like a one trick pony. Um, <laughs> if that trick is Christ, I'm cool with it. I, I was going to say <laughs> it's, it's, it's Christ in the sense of someone said, well, I have Christ. I'm obviously, you know, like, how could you say that? Like I'm a priest or whatever, but like um, people's, because I've known priests who, you know, they're like, I don't even know if I believe, you know what I mean? Like, God help them, right? God help them. Um, they they end up in these places, from my perspective, primarily from, right? It, it's, it's, it's in the context of not just what I've said, but I mean, you have to imagine this is just a podcast, how long we've been talking, right? It's, it's, it's bigger than this, but it is a lack of of repentance it's a lack of, of an awareness of repentance because repentance is the uh, forgive me for putting this repentance is the, almost like the aphrodisiac in regards of your connection to, to christ repentance is the, is the thing that keeps keeps you hungry and keeps you wanting christ and desiring christ and needing christ i need a savior people find themselves in a place where they are so concerned about looking like a fundamentalist, looking like what the, whatever their mom or their dad was or the youth minister when they were growing up. They don't want to do that. So they'll, they'll go to these extremes to avoid that. And so that, that's where you get people who they'll talk to you all day about the most seemingly arcane and, you know, kind of, complex aspect of orthodox theology but yet you know their heart is cold towards towards christ like how does that happen that's how it happens right and it's 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 a it's a kind of like it, it's idolatrous right they they idolize their identity how they want to see themselves whether it's in contrast of their fundamentalist mom who they're mad at because she made them go to Sunday school, right? But, you know, they still feel guilty, so they they can't quite not be a Christian. You know what I mean? You have that situation. You have people who have aspirations to, to be perceived a certain way, no matter what it is. And Christ will get in the way of those things. And it's a lot <laughs> easier, it's a lot easier to try to sidestep that and to, to be frank, to some degree begin to allow an antichrist spirit to come and be in the place of Christ and be like, no, see, I'm a Christian. Like, 
I'm just sophisticated, right? But that's but the sophistication. Yeah, the Antichrist is sophisticated. Christ is Christ is gonna make you if you really surrender, Christ is gonna make you look like a fool to yep. most people. Yep, yep. And and it's foolishness. The cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. And I and I would say that like that it, that ability, excuse me, not the ability, the willingness to embrace the cross, that is where or the lack of is where people find themselves in that place because it it isn't about right so we're not anti intellectual prowess obviously right it's like it's oh. great you know it's like i know i'm a dummy but that doesn't mean that i have to like <laughs> you know i don't i don't despair anyone else who's there's far like most people are most priests are way more you know erudite and brilliant than i am right i'm just it's whatever but for me it's not about like being anti-academic per se or being anti you know intellectualism per se or it's the fact that these things become idolatrous right because i i know very good incredibly brilliant people who i mean i just love listening to them and then you know their 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 ability to you know expand on theology it's just wonderful right and they are good humble christian souls who are genuinely loving god and doing their best it, it, it's not about it, it's the sophistication right it's it's that it's not even it's the it's the sophisto thing right it's it's when that that is the mode in which you are like it's that slick mode it's that slickness that you're looking for right that's the problem that i find that i find of course there are always exceptions right but generally speaking i think that's i think that's where it comes from and, and again kind of getting us back to the royal path thing it, it applies in every level it's kind of like um one of the kind of earlier things that was going around you know people are on facebook You'll find one person who kind of like will give the good arguments and people will begin to parrot it, right? So like, oh, well, you know why people like conspiracy? Because it makes people feel like they're in the know. Like that was one thing that, that was going around a yeah. lot in 2020, right? But see the problem, the, and there's truth to that. There, there are people who, and I've met these people, and this is, this is, again, what I try to do to help people get back on that world path, right? Which is, Okay, they may find the church, Christ, blah, 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 but it's just like they're still consumed with the con with, with the quote unquote conspiracy, right? And I'm like, okay, that's great. We see it, but we have to kind of like pull back from it because there's always been conspiracies. Like, I'll tell you a big secret. The principalities and the powers, the fallen ones, have been doing this from jump, right? <laughs> The Sybils, right? Uh, Herod, right? I mean, you know, we can go on to all the great movements, all the great religious movements, all all the the gods of old, right? These are all conspiracies to some degree, if you will, against the Christ and against His chosen ones. So, nothing's changed. We employ a, to a greater degree. Um, technology but you know uh the writers at the mcu they weren't that they weren't that clever right because everyone loved and forgive me for being that guy you know uh i'm that guy's like i was wearing toms before you or whatever like <laughs> right yeah. uh but you know oh man i love the thor thing where it's just like well you know uh magic is really just technology we don't understand blah 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 okay you guys know me, this is, I've said this a million times, but for anyone who's never heard this before, fine. But like, I'll tell you, what's the difference between a scientist and a sorcerer, right? The sorcerer is more honest. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the sorcerer is more honest. Like that's the only difference between the two of them, right? And so like, I- Demons think know what Facebook is. Like there's a time where I genuinely be like, angels and demons would be perplexed by a computer. Like I would be like, they would be like, well, I don't know this new thing is like i more tend to deal with like 
you know, technology from like 500 years ago. And then of course, sentence. And I'm like, oh, wait, yeah. Okay, all right, I see that. I see that. I, let, me, let me tell you something. There's, um, there was a Romanian Orthodox church um, back in, in Anaheim um, where I'm from. And the priest there, a great priest, and he an iconographer. And I remember seeing this icon he did outside of his church. It was just like mind blowing, right? Mind blowing. I first saw this in like uh, 2000. I saw it like 2004. I think it was when I saw this icon. And it's it's the judgment, right? It's hell. But 2004. Okay, this is 2004. He has demons on laptops. Oh. And I was like, that's <laughs> cool. Yes. Wow. Right? Because on the one hand, people are like, okay, obviously, like, yeah, you know, your computer's killing you. It's a port of the hell. We all know that. Okay. As we are using the medium. But it's also on that level that you're talking about. It's like, it's not like the 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 demons, the powers aren't like. Ooh, what is this thing? Television. Yeah. Ooh, what is this thing? Like, it's like everyone do yourselves a favor, read the book of Enoch, and then just kind of get an understanding of how this stuff all just kind of trickles down to human beings. You know what I mean? And and the thing is, is do you have the humility to just acknowledge that that's how it is? Like we've talked about this before. It's like being a creator. I've had this experience so many times where I have an idea at least I think I have an idea that I think originates from me at the time, right? Don't do anything with it. Six months, a year later. It's always six months. It's right? always six months. Wait it's six like months. <laughs> the ex I mean, to the T, right? It's because, oh, and then finally you wake up and you're like, oh, that idea of like, it didn't originate with me. It's out there, right? Where is that? Where is that happening? Where's that coming from? So once you begin to just kind of this is part of what, what Cyprian was saying, but in a, in a more broader way, you just need to, this is, this is where becoming, this is why being Orthodox is so great. When you can just ex trust the church and just understand that the fathers, the elders, they're speaking from experience. They're laying out the cosmology. They're laying out the map of reality, right? Once you have the map, you now need to navigate, right? It's like, look, the three of us, we need to meet up in two weeks in, you know, uh, Malta, okay? How are we gonna get there? Well, we're all three gonna get there differently, but we're all three gonna have maps. We're gonna have to navigate that map, right? You trusting the church doesn't mean that you turn your brain off and everything's automatic. And the reason for that is, is because God created us that we would be in communion with him, know him, love him as free beings as he is, right? The problem is, is that we're not free. The problem is, is that we're in bondage to sin and to our passions. And so the life of the church, primarily for most of us, is about breaking that bondage and purifying us. And God willing, we'll get out of that to some degree in this life and, and start barely approaching some illumination right but that freedom that's what god wants like god and, and and that's the big trick of the devil right the big trick of the devil has been not just like making himself not exist okay that's great but the big trick is yeah you know what god is your abusive daddy god is the daddy who drank too much and ignored you God is the daddy who treated you inappropriately. God is the daddy who didn't give you what you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. All, all, all of these projections, this is this has been, I mean, the number one tool par excellence because if you can get people to hate the hate the false god, right? To hate the straw man, hey, it's been proven that that's enough for a lot of people, right? But, but the fact of the matter is, is when you begin to really encounter Christ and then Christ reveals the father to you and gives you the Holy Spirit and you begin to see like, whoa, God is not who I thought. 
God is. Moreover, I'm not who I thought I was. Uh, on both ends, right? I'm not just, you know, a piece of dung, which, you know, hello Calvinists, right? I'm not just a piece of dung. But on the other hand, I'm not the good person that I thought I was. All that good stuff I thought I did, it was really so people would think goodness of me, right? That's that rural path, right? When you when you come to that place of neither saying, you know, Saint Silouan, paraphrasing him, don't say I'm a saint, right? Don't be calling delusion to think that you're a saint, but don't also fall into the despair of I, God couldn't save me, right? That's the rural path, that's Saint Silouan. When you find that space, what happens is you now are free. You are now free. And this is St. Augustine, love God and do what you want, basically, right? You, if you love God, like truly love God in the sense of really loving him, not looking at him as a genie, right? But as a son or a daughter, whatever, then these things that constrain us, our passions, our sins, the world, the influence of the devils, they begin to fade away and you begin to operate in freedom and you begin to navigate the map. You begin well, your, desi your desire changes because who you are has changed, right? Like you've been transformed. Precisely. And so what you, what you desire most, once you're transformed, you just, and, and, you're, and you are in repentance actively, then what it is that you desire is going to be right. what leads you down the, the royal path. Now, Cyprian, if I could just slide you an electronic chocolate. I just want to say that was that was a great underhanded pitch because this is one of the things I want to say, which for a lot of people, they're not getting it. And let me just say this. For those of you, I hate to be that guy. Anyone who's listening, whatever. <laughs> are, you like, are you turning the chair around now? I'm turning the like, chair. Yeah. Right? You'd and, like and turn like, your hat on backwards. And, and gosh, you know, I hope this, I'm going to stop. I'm just going to say it, right? I don't want to make it worse. But for a lot of people, they're like, well, what should I do? And I'm like, you need to become Orthodox. And, and when I say you need to become Orthodox, I'm not saying you need to like get the card, say, I'm a card carrying member now, punching the clock. Here I am. What I mean is the sacrament of baptism and chrismation gives you new eyes. Like, like period, period, period. The sacraments are real. There is a level of experience that you cannot pass through without entering into the sacramental life, period. I'm, I know that just a lot of people don't want to hear that, but that's part of the problem right now is because there's people who would say they're quote unquote orthodox, but they don't, they don't believe that. That sounds fundamentalist to them, but I'm telling you from experience, there's only so far you can go without being brought into the church, without being baptized, without having chrismation, which are the two eyes to see and partaking of the life, the center of the universe, which is the Eucharist, which is, that is everything. And so th this is, this is I'm really glad you said that because this is one of those key things that this is the key thing that's missing for a lot of people. Because a lot of people are waking up and they're waking up because they're recognizing the absurdity of whatever it is. For some people, it was Trumpism. Trumpism woke some people up. But for a lot of people, it was the just absurdity of the wokeism and all that stuff, right? And that's great. I'm all for it. But let's just be clear. The end road of this is Christ. And if you really want to enter into the fullness of what that means, right? And not just getting your get out of hell free card, right? But entering into this world where joy and love and wisdom is open to you on levels you never thought was possible. It's only found in that life in Christ. And that life in Christ isn't, we're not talking about just some, some sort of flowery metaphor. It's real because it's also a life of pain, right? We find life through death and we find hope through absolute despair in this world. We don't despair of Christ. We don't despair of his salvation. But we learn if you aren't, and this is another problem. These people, this well, is one of my big well, problems. Forgive these me. People, these people. Forgive well, me. Thank you. About. Thank you. God help us. 
if we find into if we find ourselves in a place where the vaccine is our only hope, the government is our only hope, whatever earthly thing you want to say is our only hope. If you if, if you are in that place, I just want I just it's terrifying because that's the place we need to have despair in that sense. There's no uh, hope in this world. There, there, there is no government. There is no program. There is nothing that is going to bring us salvation outside of Christ. Like, Don't put your faith in princes and sons of men. Sons of men, right? Full stop. <laughs> and, and see, and that's too radical for people. People, and, that, and that's one of the big things is like with the world path, what I've found is because I, I experienced it over and over again. People like to talk this way, mostly because they like being in the mushy middle. The royal path isn't about being the mushy middle. This isn't about trying to appease people. It's actually very difficult. It's very difficult to stay in that place and be like, I must be consistent with this, right? But that's the reality. That's why all these people are like, you know what? I mean, sure, local government's okay, I guess. Uh, you know, sure, it's like, I heard this, we all heard this too, like, oh, okay, well, if you're going to poop with the vaccines, like, I bet you'd give your kid, you know, medicine if he's sick. It's like, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the problem if is- If they're it, sick, if they're right, sick. <laughs> right, if they're sick, but but you, even if even if it's the case, right, like, there's there's an order to things, right? Like, watch this. It's not, it's another key thing for the road path. It's not either or, it's both hands. Right. So it's about oh, that's so maddening as a layman, it, like it, as like talking to a priest and being like, OK, you know, da, 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 da. they're like, well, it is and it isn't. And that's like the first three to four years of my orthodoxy it, it, it is, is being like, well, it is and it isn't. And I'm like, it, it, it isn't right. Hey, I'm born in America, man. you got to like you got to give me yes or no. Like, Just right. tell me what to believe so I can believe it. And unfortunately, actually, extremely fortunately, that's not been my Christ. Right. It's, it's got to be knowledge, not, you know, it's got to be wisdom. It's got to be experience and time. Right. Right. So, well, gentlemen, I think we're closing in on two hours. Okay. Um, you guys put ketchup on top of your eggs, <laughs> or do you put them on the side? Only if they're ketchup. scrambled. <laughs> Only if they're scrambled. Yes, oh, I'm talking about scrambled, scrambled, scrambled. Okay, With cheese on and top. American cheese and all that stuff on top. On top, top. Father, it depends. Oh, come on! It is and it isn't. With <laughs> eggs and ketchup, <laughs> come on, man. But, it is and it isn't on top of the eggs. <laughs> yeah. Um, Madden. I'm definitely a side man. No, I'm on top. My my wife and my daughter. My daughter organically was like. No, I want it on the side. I was like, you've chosen a path now. And like, this is the path you will continue for the rest of your life. It's like, it may seem mundane, but it's not. I promise you. But, you know, then you get into the whole idea of dynamics, cold ketchup, more than eggs, blah, blah, blah. So, um, well, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, this is Royal Path. Uh, I can't think of a strong closer. So, um, oh, that's what I want to say. Prismont Cosmos, it's orthodoxtalks.com. That's the website where you can find the uh, Talk 82 notes. I really recommend anybody who's looking for some more patristic, uh, certainly like 100% per, like uh, patristic like viewpoint of what he is in. You know, it's, it's an echo chamber. For people like me, you know, I go in there and it's all just confirming what I believe. Um, but even then, you can look past that to the point where I can now define some things I could not find before. And not only that, he points out some of these shepherds right now that have openly done some kind of heinous, said some heinous thing. And like some more despicable phenomena of like closing down churches, like people cannot go to get Eucharist, but they will become like vaccine stations. Like you can literally go to your church to get a vaccine, but you cannot go to go receive. Lord have mercy. And like, yeah. So, 
there's things like that. So orthodoxtalks.com, that's a great reading material. They do like half hour, five minutes, and it's really good. It's really, really fantastic. And, you know, he makes the point, this is the last thing I'll say, he makes the point, which is comforting to me, is he cites so many saints who fell into heresy for a while, and then they repented, like they, they came back. And this is the whole thing that he says is like, even our leaders fall, like the, the best of us have fallen before. And that's the whole other side of this is, you know, then there's repentance, then you can come back, then you can, you know, we're not going to kick you out. Like, unless we need to, but like, you know. And, and if I could, I just, I just want to say it's super important because this is something that, again, I, I'm speaking about this, but I'm experiencing it myself still, right? This ability to have mercy, the mercy you don't give is the mercy you don't get. And so people look that first year, okay, man. Nobody knew what was happening, yeah. right? So let's just be clear. What I'm speaking about is those who are willfully doubling down on these things and not hearing the voices in their life that are saying, please just take a look at this. Yeah. Please don't just go along with all this because something's wrong. That's what I'm talking about. Because when this thing hit, it caught everyone by surprise to one degree or another, right? And we have to have mercy. That's a part of the path, right? Having, being merciful is, is one of the ways that keeps you on the world path, right? Being merciful and, and being quick to leave room for people to repent so you can have that same mercy given to you when you make your mistakes, right? I'm glad you brought that up because that's that's super important because the thing is, is, as we begin to move into the age of miracle, which I think that's one of the, one of the things that we're headed towards, we're going to really need to, to call on, on these things, love, mercy, charity towards one another. Like these are the things that are going to help us work through the, the growing delusion that's coming. Cause there's, there's a whole nother thing coming in regards of people seeing signs and wonders. You know, they're, they're going to be technological in, in, in base. They're going to be scientific in base, right? Because people, that's how they'll accept it. Mm -hmm. But they'll have a Christian veneer. It'll be, anti, it'll be more antichrist spirit, lowercase a, maybe become capital A, you know? But this, this piece of mercy, the antichrist, the mercy that, the spirit of antichrist offers is is vainglorious it's one that people it's one so that people would like you right the mercy that christ tells that the mercy that christ calls us to is one based in humility and repentance your own humility your own repentance extending mercy because you know you need it not because you want to look like the good guy not because you want to be seen as nice and kind that's being glorious, right? But because you recognize I too am a sinner, right? The publican, right? I beat my breast knowing that I need God's mercy. That's the difference between those two things, right? And so I just want to end it on that because this isn't about bashing people, you know. I feel sorry for the people who are wearing masks in their car by themselves <laughs> with the window rolled up. Yeah. I feel sorry for them, you know, but it's just like, May God continue to help me to feel sorry for them and not be like, ugh, like those people. Yeah, that's usually when I'm not doing very good. That's right, you I know, like, good. like because to me, this is all practical. Like, all this stuff that we're talking about, if it's not helping me to, to at least check myself and not just throw out the disses in my mind to people, right, then I'm not really doing my part, right? So... Yeah, Grisma Cosma says, saints were strict, but you're not a saint, and they did it with love. So, yeah, he said something like that, I think. Anyway, it'll work. All right, gentlemen. Uh, still can't think of a strong closer. Thank so, thank you both. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Um, that's it. <laughs>